What exactly is this? You're given a piece of wire that is two meters long and you're supposed to um, share the wire between making a square and making an equilateral triangle, all three sides equal, and this all four sides equal. So the question is, how would you share the wire between these two shapes so that you would have a maximum area? Okay, the total area will be maximum. There's another option where the total area will be the minimum. Well, let's see what to do. Let's start from what we know and then we'll gradually um, narrow it down to what we don't know. Okay, so first things first. Well, if we're going to share it, let's assume we're going to share this like this, okay, where this portion is x and this portion will be 2 minus x. So the remaining portion will be um, this subtracted from 2 and that's going to give us the portion for the triangle. Now, if we give this to the square, each of the sides will be one quarter of x. So we can have this to be x over 4, this is x over 4, this is x over 4, x over 4. And for the triangle, it's going to be this divided by 3, and that's going to be 2 minus x over 3, 2 minus x over 3, 2 minus x over 3. So that's the measure of each of the sides, okay? When we add all of these together, we'll go back to R2. So that settles the case. So let's, what will be the area of this square? The area of this square is gonna be um, this squared, x over four squared, which is gonna be x squared over 16. That's the area of this square. What's the area of this triangle if we take the area? So the area of a triangle, because we don't know the height, we can actually um, use this formula, which is one half AB sine C, where A and B are two sides, and C is the angle in between them. The special thing about this triangle is that um, angle C is always 60 for an equilateral triangle, so we know that this is 60 degrees, so we can use this angle to find that. So that's going to be one half multiplied by A. A is 2 minus X over 3 multiplied by b, which is another 2 minus x over 3, multiplied by sine 60 degrees. Okay, well, if we put all of this together, you're going to get, well, let's just put, let me write it out. This is 1 over 2 times, if we square this, it's going to be 2 minus x squared over 9 times sine 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Now, this is something you should know, okay? Um, you want to make sure that is that is in your head. I just think I'm going to change this piece of chalk. Okay, so this is going to be. Um, so this is going to be. If you put all of these together, you're going to get um, the square root of three over thirty-six multiplied by. Um, if we we can actually expand this, and that's going to give us two squared. That's four minus 4x plus 4x squared, no, plus x squared, just x squared. There's no 2, so plus x squared. Okay, so that is the area we get when we, um, for, for a triangle, okay, based on this x, in terms of x. So, this is what I want to explain, and this is important that you understand this. Because you're dealing with areas, okay, you're going to get expressions that will give you parabolic functions. You're going to get parabolas when you plot the graph, okay? So, and that's important in making a decision, and it will help us as we continue our decision, our calculation. Let me use this spot. I'm going to erase it, but I'm going to come back to show you what, what's going on. So when you plot the graph... Because this graph has to do with areas, you're going to be dealing with this expression. 
you might have a term in x, okay? You might have a constant, okay? However, so the total area will be in this form where this will be ax plus bx plus c. We don't know what a is b until we put everything together. But one thing you're sure of is when you plot the graph, it's going to be a parabola, okay? Now, and because the minimum you can go when you're talking about measurements of the sides of anything is zero, your graph will not cross to the negative part, okay? It will stay on the positive part. And your graph is likely to start from here, go down, and then come up. But we're restricted to just two meters. So it's possible that your graph will start from zero and go all the way and end here so that the part that is zero is greater than the part that is two. So that your total area at the end will be greater than at the beginning. So you have two extreme conditions, okay? Which could also provide you the maximum or the minimum. It's possible the graph is like this. It's also possible that the graph slopes upwards Okay, or the graph rises faster after this point, such that by the time you get to 2, it's much higher than when it's at 0. We don't know, but we can test that now. The third option is that there's always a minimum. Okay, there's always a minimum, and that would be the answer to the second part. Right now, we can't tell which is the minimum, which is the maximum, which is the local minimum, the local maximum, absolute minimum or absolute maximum, okay? But we're gonna start to see it now as we figure out what's going on. So it's possible that this is what it is. This would be a minimum graph if your graph opens up, and that's if your A is positive. But if A is negative, your graph will now open downwards, so it's gonna be like this, and you're gonna have a maximum. But if your graph opens up, you're definitely going to have a minimum. Okay, so as soon as we get our quadratic equation together, we can figure out which one it is. But before we go on, why don't we get the extreme ends first? Okay, what part would it be? Where will, let's say we use everything or nothing. Let's go to this. So this is the area you're going to get if you make a square. And this is the area you're going to get if you make a triangle. Okay, with some portions of it. Now, let's assume that for the two extremes of this cable from the beginning to the end, okay, you decided that, you know what, X is just going to be everything. I'm not going to make a triangle. I'm going to make everything into a square. The value of your X will now be equal to 2. So, you can find out that if X equals 2, that is the entire length, if you use the, all, the entire cable, then you're going to say that the area will be equal to 2 squared over 16, which is 4 over 16, which is 1 over 4. That's what you get, meter squared. Okay, that's if you use everything for the square. What if you use everything for the triangle? See, those are the two extremes. If you use everything for the square, it means x is at 2, which is this point. Okay? So let's assume this is the graph of the area you get if you build a square. In the middle would be the area you get if you have a combination of a square and the triangle. Okay? Remember, we're plotting x. Now, so you're going to get one quarter of x. Now, the second option, uh, let me put a, a, a barrier here. Okay. If x is 0, let's say you didn't use any part of this cable, any part of the wire for the square. All you did was you used it for the triangle. It means x is going to be 0, and 2 minus 0 is going to be 2. So you actually have all of the wire for the triangle. This is what you're going to get as your area. So you're going to have area will be equal to square root of 3 over 36 multiplied by 4 minus 4 times 0 plus 0 squared. Okay, and that's going to be square root of 3 over 36 uh, minus, oh, it's just time, because it's 0, 0, it's just going to be times 4. 
okay, which is going to be square root of 3 over 9. Okay, so far we can establish that a quarter meter squared is bigger than this. This is about 0 0.25, this is about 1.732 over 9, that's 0 .0 0 0.9, about 0 0.92, they're about, I think, 0 0.9 something. Okay, so that's what you get. Now, we know this is greater than this, so this might look like maybe this stopped here, maybe somewhere here. So this is the point, but we don't know if we are going to get a maximum or we're going to get a minimum, okay? So let's combine both of them and try to find the critical number when we differentiate. And that's where you get the secret to what's, whether it's going to be a minimum or it's going to be a maximum. But it is certain, based on the concept of the graphs, that one of these is the maximum, definitely, or minimum, depending on the shape of the graph. We'll come back here to refer to them. And um, one of them is not relevant because they're right there in the middle. They're local minimums or maximums, but they're not the absolute. So let's see what's going to happen here. So if we combine both of them, what you're going to get is the total area, okay, A will be equal to the area of the square, x squared over 16. I, I'm just going to write 1 over 16 x squared, plus the total area you get here, plus square root of 3 over 36. Uh, multiplied by 4 minus 4x plus x squared. Okay? It's going to be 1 over 16x squared plus minus, if you multiply this by this, it's going to be square root of 3 over 9x and this is going to be plus square root of 3 over 36x squared. Um, what's da dx? da dx is going to be, this is going to be 2 over 16, which is 1 over 8x squared, plus this is going to be um, 0 minus square root of 3 over 9, and this is going to be plus square root of 3 over 18x. Interesting. So, at this point, remember that at the critical point, the ADX is going to be zero. That's why on the graph, oh, I forgot to let, it, let you see this. If you notice that the coefficients of x squared before we differentiated, where is it? They were both positive. You can see, if you bring these two together, you're going to get a positive coefficient. So it's this kind of graph. It's not a maximum graph, it's a minimum graph. Which means that the graph we're dealing with is something like this. Okay? Where when x is 0, you get a value which is this value. When x is 0. And then the second one is when x is 2, which is the extreme value at the other end. Okay, so this graph goes this way. This is 2, this is 0, and then there is a minimum point, and that's what we're looking for. Once you get this answer, you're fine. You just need to solve this equation for x. Okay, I'm glad I was able to make this obvious because every time you solve an area problem, you're, you're maximizing or minimizing or optimizing generally. You want to know what kind of graph you're dealing with if it's going to open up or open down and that's why when you look at the extreme it's always good to consider the extremes and not just the answer that you have because the extremes will give you either the maximum or the minimum and then the 
the actual absolute minimum or maximum then will give you the absolute maximum or minimum okay just get that when you're dealing with optimization if it's general some graphs have no minimum or maximum remember generally the parabola has no absolute maximum if it opens up because it continues like that it just keeps going to infinity okay it only has a minimum but when you have a constraint like this length of wire from here to here it's not a forever graph it's a graph that starts somewhere and ends somewhere you have to take note of those extreme points as minimum and maximum points otherwise you will ignore it and ignore your score okay you don't want to lose points because you did not recognize the extreme values okay which are also critical points on the graph if you have a constraint if you don't have a constraint then there are no maximums the same thing if your graph is like this this graph has no minimums as long as x is not limited but once x is limited within um, an interval like this is from 0 to 2 if the interval is between 1 and something you have to consider the values at those extreme points do not ignore them they might be the only answer you're looking for okay let's actually write this as a as an equation and this is supposed to be x okay that was supposed to be x I fixed it okay so because we've differentiated so the two comes down take one away that's what you have so let's solve this this is negative let's bring it to this side or let's just write the equation this way 1 over 8x plus um, square root of 3 over 18x will be equal to square root of 3 over 9 okay we just need to solve for x um, well let's clear it looks like we may not be able to clear everything so um, I'm going to multiply everything by 72. Multiply each of these terms by 72 and something nice will show up. Okay? So, if I multiply each of these by 72, I'm going to get 8 in 72 has to be, somebody help me, 9. So that's 9x plus 18 in 72 has to be 4 plus square root of 3x will be equal to 8 root 3 perfect why did I choose 72 because it's the least common multiple of 8 18 and 9 I know that you should know that too okay so now we can isolate and say x into 9 plus 9 plus no 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 it's not root 3 it's, there's a 4 missing come on okay so 9 plus 4 root 3 um, and this would be 8 root 3. So your x would be equal to 8 square root of 3 over 9 plus 4 root 3. I will not be testing this because I can see it from the graph that this is the minimum. However, if you have a calculator, you can punch this in and it tells you the length okay of this that's gonna give you the minimum area this is a very 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 tiny 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 number okay such that when you take the area of the square it's almost as if you did not make a square and most of it will go to the triangle and that's the only way you can have a square and a triangle and have you would just you, you just rather want to ignore it because the square will be almost nothing okay so this is the minimum okay and this is the maximum and this is just another option so that's it I hope you understand this concept this is the most important thing most people will just go from writing the two equations they will add both of them together that's another way people do this they add both of them together like I did they will get this answer after getting this answer to be X they're stuck with just one answer they forget about the extreme values of X being 0 and X being this so you can do that you don't have to start with this 
you just want to go straight into this you find this value and then you now plug these values in so you're going to have three values to test you'll be testing x equals zero you'll be test testing x equals two and the third value you'll be testing will be x equals eight square root of three over nine plus four root three you have to get these three values two of them already a part of the line and the third one is what you just got well I don't have a calculator so I had to use my brain of the graph the shape of the graph and what I see and I know that this is gonna be the minimum because when I plot this on the graph it's gonna be like this and this is gonna be my point two this is point zero and this point is this point I hope this video makes a difference if it did please give it a like give it a share leave a good comment okay in the comment section and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video comes up my name is Newton Okwa and I'll see you in the next video until then don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living tell them I said so bye bye